Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hello, Teddy. We can't stop snapping insane episode for you guys because we had our season opener two card release to break down OTA just now. Whew. Some crazy hits on the OTA leagues, milestones, and new hot cards releasing to talk about. Brad, how's that? Uh, how's that climb going? What decks are we gravitating towards? Uh, so I'm just trying a just collection of random stuff. Uh, so we've yep. been trying stuff with the new cards with Blink and things like that. Uh, I've tried my, I guess, what was all reliable last season is one I've been labeling Hellfire. Yep. Um, which is the War Machine, Infinite, uh, Ebony Maw oh, type of deck. Um, off meta spice from Brad. That I love the, the really call good. out to the, the random collection. That's kind of like our YouTube channel right now. If you guys enjoy the content here, <laughs> hop over to the YouTube channel, drop us up. That really helps signal boost us if you want to be able to hear more of our uh, hot takes and deck tips. Yeah, and you can get exclusive content over there as well as getting it early on patreon.com slash can't stop snapping like the bonus episode where we did an amazing job with the bounce deck when a clean 5-0 i believe if you want to learn to play one bounce. of my one of my top collab content moments all time brad we got to get another one cooking do we have a list that we're doing yet or is that still up for submission from viewers so right now we have a few options available but we'll make a poll probably in the next couple of days that okay. go both on on both on Twitter and Patreon. So go ahead and nice. again, join the Patreon for free. You can still vote on these. Um, it's going to be between, I believe, Discard, High Evo, Ramp, because of the popularity of Blank um, now. Um, yeah. Kind of yeah. bring that up. And then uh, we'll figure out one more. So if you have any suggestions for the fourth one, uh, one that I didn't say I, again. Uh, yeah. Allow me to submit uh, Affliction okay. Ongoing, especially with this claw oh, yeah. hype. Yeah, uh, that is just a dirty, dirty deck. Now, I know it's going to make a lot of people sad because it's heavily leveraging the updated a US agent, um, which is a sore spot for a lot of people who chose yeah. him as their skip card. But um, it's a super dirty deck and there are substitutions that we can break down. So if you guys want to see some psycho affliction ongoing, we could uh, we could showcase that as well. Yep. And of course, before we get into everything else, drop a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff on YouTube. If you're here on Spotify and wherever else you listen to your podcast, thank you. You can't see us for the most part, but we're happy to have you listening. All right, Teddy. He gave you a full fist bump there if you didn't if you didn't feel it, it in was, his voice. It was more of a uh like a, a oh shucks kind of like okay. yeah. swing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into this uh OTA first things first. It's a cool one. Um yes. I like this one a lot starting with a couple of cards that people are maybe a little bit, I don't know, like, it, so it's weird. I go on the Discord or I go on yep. the subreddit and there's yep. always a post about it, right? Especially the subreddit. Oh, yeah. And they copy and paste the entire notes, including the little excerpts of uh, why yes. they're doing these things. Yes, the dev notes. And everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people still go, why did they do this? Why did they do, do yeah, that? And I, I love like, that. It's like, did not read said. anything. <laughs> they just look at what happened and just said, I don't need to see anything else. Okay, so of... Brad, the big head <laughs> scratcher, right, is why would you nerf Hawk? Dark Hawk has right. felt like he disappeared from the meta. Shocking revelation from the dev stat trackers. One of the highest, if not the highest, win rate cards since going to five cost. I had right. no idea... <laughs> That he was doing that well as a sleeper. I will say, um, the few times on stream, I would be like, let's fire up a Darkhawk list. Let's try to get Darkhawk going. Yeah. It always felt solid. It nice. never felt like insane, but we would win and we do pretty well. So I'm not shocked by that in a sense. I'm a little bit like perplexed on the way they went about it because of a another card that they buffed in this OTA. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Because uh, let's just skip Lady Deathstrike for now. We'll go back to her. I, okay. I, we need to talk to give context to my thought process on Darkhawk and my confusion with that a little bit. Let's yeah. talk about Leech. So right. Leech was changed a while ago to be on reveal again and then only removing the text from on reveal cards in your opponent's hand rather than hitting everything, right? 
and they buffed him to a 4-2 from a 5-3. So you get him down a turn earlier, and they say in the notes they want to be able to target other impactful cards like Hella, uh, but of yes. course other five costs like Cannonball, right. uh, Modoc, things like that. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Annihilus so, was a major call out as well. Exactly, Annihilus as well. <clears throat> so in a roundabout way, they buffed a card to help kind of stabilize other archetypes around on reveal, like Annihilus, Hella, uh, the lockdown stuff with a Cannonball. But they didn't touch any of those, right? Right. So it makes my it makes me have a little bit of a head scratch to like, was there any any other avenue to the Dark Hawk thing? Like I don't like I guess they can't buff Mill because that no no Mill actually just doesn't do anything because it's it's your deck, not theirs. I don't know. There's no is there any archetype that just like really hurts Dark Hawk? Well it was Blob, but right. that he's not nearly he's a He's on a diet now um, <laughs> and just not as impactful as he used to be. So I think Hawk is, yeah, standing in just a really solid spot. At the five cost, it's harder to abuse him, which I think is why the deck has not taken off in the meta, but it's still right. very powerful. And I think that his win rate is largely a factor of how good rocks are and how dependent the meta is becoming on combo decks, where if you draw just one rock and you miss the key draw, you're... You're off the rails a little bit, and then they slam the hawk, and they follow up with just good cards that they've kind of built around him, and they they outvalue you. Also, you know, people might be looking at this and be like, "Oh my god, Dark Hawk got nerfed." It's only by one point, by the way. I'm right. not complaining yeah. about that. Oh, I'm yeah, just yeah. more questioning of like what their philosophy is. Um, the other thing is though, Leech goes perfectly in a Dark Hawk deck again. He does. Used honestly, to go. the curve is smooth. <laughs> right. Rock, good two drop, rocks again, leech, dark hawk. Blink. You could go blink on five, yes, and blink save off the... the leech, baby. Trade the leech for the hawk. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or do the that. Doctor Doom, because your deck could run Doctor Doom or Magneto. Like, I probably would. Yeah. You're going like to have a... to tech in a pretty weighty high curve there if you want to include blink in that specific deck because. That was a little uh, hole in my initial yeah. analysis of Blink was that you have to have that more expensive card to get any trading going on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit of a deck building puzzle. And I like that because her potential is still totally worth it. Um, it's fun to think about. Maybe we should play um, the finish the deck with a Hawk list next week. We did yeah. that game where we we had a fleshed out hawk. Or we what was the deck? I had I've seen eight cards of a specific archetype. It, and it was like it was a, a mockingbird junk yeah. style deck. We fleshed it out, and then I ended up piloting that to rank seventy two in the world throughout that rest of the season. So yeah. we'll do it again with hawk, and we'll see where I go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so other card that they hit that people are sitting there going like, why? Uh, yeah. It's Lady Deathstrike. She went from a five seven to a five six. Now Teddy, oh, we I talked know about why. this before. <laughs> She was uh, in that deck. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about this before where the fact that they changed her ability now gives them two knobs to change. They can change right. the ability effect now of like the number on that as well as her power. And this is exactly what I was alluding to as we see them knock down a single bit of power. And they go on to say in the notes of like uh, in a Nihilus decks specifically, she was often the number one winning card our highest win rate card yes. in the deck above a Nihilus, which should tell you something like yeah. a Nihilus is the whole reason you run his these named, cards like Sentry and the, stuff. The deck is named after him, but the, his right. thing is that death strike hitting those threes is crazy. You realize how many matchups have pivotal three or cheaper cards that then just get eradicated by death strike. And it is staggering how impactful she can be. You can take out that Elsa, you can take out that Angela. You can take out that. The list goes on and on. But right. the efficiency, uh, what? Like, basically, in that matchup against like Loki, Lady Deathstrike was your winning card. Yeah. It's another yeah. card that's like, we talk about Gladiator being free against certain decks. Right. Uh, I would yeah. say Loki is one of those decks. Lady Deathstrike yeah. does feel very similarly, especially when the Pixie deck goes off and she costs one suddenly yes so <laughs> uh the other ones just uh before we get to the fun stuff 
rounding out some pretty much previous nerfs due to their eras is what they say. Like, it's like <laughs> the Terra Swift's eras tour. We have the Psylocke yeah. Thanos eras tour. And then the, <laughs> the, uh, Shuri. Old Shuri Sauron, man, I don't want to remember those days, but honestly, at this point I've seen Shuri pop back up occasionally. Also, I had a number of people I've postulating tried. that Shuri and Blink could be something, which maybe I've tried so, it, gone against it. It's uh, it's something. Yeah. So you get the a, a fourteen nice. power Blink. Yeah. Replace a four one with something that's marginally Punchier. better. Um, yep. Yeah, that's that's definitely something. I, I will will say that. So maybe if, you put that in your own. Or if yeah. it pulls Taskmaster, it will not scan Blink, right? No. Whoa. Yeah. Hold but on. But if it pulls Zola, will Zola be able to target Blink? Because Blink is not like fully resolved until that. Yeah. So mid card. one thing worth noting. So like, the, let's go back to another interaction that people were yeah, confused yeah. on that I've seen. Uh, it's Jubilee. So you right. play Jubilee, and Jubilee hits Blink. Yep. The initial thought would be, oh, it replaces the Jubilee, but because no. the Jubilee effect is still happening. When right. the blink effect goes off, it hits whatever was previous to that. So in this sense, if blink... If blink is cycling a card with an unreveal, that unreveal will not target blink. Blink is not resolved yeah, I believe to be so. targeted. Yeah. Which is a little awkward because then... for Yeah. The Taskmaster the just whiffs because the, the Shuri is gone. It can't even yeah, target the Taskmaster either. would whiff, the Zola would potentially whiff, so you're going to need to think of just different cards you want to use in those slots or not play Blink if those cards are still in the deck. So Well, and then we also have to remember, Shuri doesn't have to be like the namesake card of the deck. Like yeah. it, it is like in Sauron stuff, it's more no, it so... it could be a Scar deck. That... Or it could just straight up just be in the deck as a four cost. Yep, as an option um, for Blink to then fine. cycle into... You're at your Doctor Doom. But and for audio listeners... And a wide play. Right. For audio listeners, apologize. Uh, we're talking about Sauron going back up from a 3-2 to a 3-3. They originally nerfed Sauron when Suri was doing really well. Sauron was the highest win rate card in the deck uh, for good reason. Yeah. Back to a 3-3. Yeah. And the same thing with Psylocke. Got nerfed from a 2-2 two -two to a 2-1 again after being nerfed up to or a buff to a 2-2 two -two in the first place because Thanos was doing well and now they've reverted the buff again. It's It's fine. Those are gonna see no, I, play, yeah. And that's I like of... how fluid <clears throat> they're allowing themselves to be to say like, "Hey, this change happened. Now we're gonna give the power back." Rather than looking for only new cards or like having you know a set time that they want to give a card change, they're al the Psylocke change was pretty recent. This the Sauron one's been sitting on it a while, and these <laughs> like next months. two are insane, man. I claw. Claw starter card claw. Uh, yeah, what plus is what two is on his on, ability? On. What is going on? Because they sit there and go like, we don't like touching starter cards. We don't like touching series one cards. It really and ruins then, the new player experience. And you then Medusa is... and Claw become late game viable meta tools, right? And Claw and is already you can't change Punisher and Captain or, America. Yeah, exactly, I'm it's, dying, wild. Brad. it's wild. It's um, wild. Why not hit the um, fan favorites? Medusa and Claw? Okay. I, I don't get it. It's really weird. And like, Don't get me wrong. I'm happy. And it's it's crazy because Claw was already like, in my opinion, always that card that was like right on the line. Is of he playable? Like... Yeah. Because when Pro X was like 5-3 and hot, Claw was playable because you could right. kind of blind Pro X and then drop the Claw. And now, if we think back to it, like they just gave the plus two power to Claw. <laughs> instead of back to pro x so <laughs> yeah that combo is just way, as yeah. dangerous as it used to be um yeah. they also had this like is it an anniversary of age of ultron they called out because we have another major buff to an age of ultron yep. villain am i missing something like because i just watched the phantom menace re-release oh, right. is there an age was, of ultron anniversary claw was randomly he, in yes, age of ultron was, that's right and he was played by andy circus everybody's yeah. favorite uh, okay i just watched uh last night uh both Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to rewatch War again uh, soon. Do you recommend I, them? I have not seen I, this, I, anything I in the franchise. Them. I okay. love them. I Genuinely speaking, tiny 30-second quick little thing about the yep. first one. Um, a lot of people like kind of, a, it's more of like divisive, I guess. Um, the other two are fantastic. 
Okay. I like this one a lot because the humanizing of like, I mean, that's the whole point, right? The humanizing of like Caesar and stuff like that, like the, yeah. uh, the apes. It makes you genuinely sad. There are moments in it throughout the entire film where I'm just like, oh, oh, I, yeah. I didn't like the way that made me feel. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, but that's good. That's a good thing. Um, so absolutely recommend them. Uh, Annie Circus again. So good. And the CGI in these are really good, like ahead of their time. Like you look at yeah. like the orangutan and you're just like, that's that's an actual orangutan. That's They trained him to speak. Yeah. How did they do that? He, he's great. Fantastic. <laughs> good job. Yeah. Maurice is his name. Uh, but yeah, back to Ultron. Uh, gives you two power drones now. We talked Ooh. about this very idea, Teddy, <laughs> like a yeah. month or two ago. Yeah, and, yeah. Because we're like, Ultron doesn't we really exist anymore. We evaluated all the six drops at one point, didn't we? Right. With like, yeah. And we collectively agreed that the simple jump from one to two power on the drones would be too good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. Now, it's, it's fair. Like, Ultron used to be a staple. And then yeah. he dropped off completely. Yep. Patriot went a different direction for a little bit, and then Patriot himself was outpaced. Now, so we, can we play it? You can. Let me let me drop some knowledge on you, Teddy, because I played an Ultron deck for about two hours on stream today. Oh boy! My overall consensus is when you have your high roll, yeah. which is Patriot Mystique. Blue Marvel, Ultron. Yeah. And then just fill everything else with Ultron bots. Yep. That is 28 power in the other lanes. Okay. <laughs> Good night. But listen to what I'm saying, though. It's 28 yeah. power. That feels like a lot. But in practice, it's not as much as it used to be. No, it is like you're capped out at that, right? And I... there's going to be other decks that out race you. Right. If they want to go tall. I had the 28 two games in a row. Yeah. Those two games in a row, I was against a Phoenix Force player both those games. Oh, no. And they just had 30 plus in each lane because they yeah. had the Shuri into Nimrod. Right. Not even the Phoenix Force play, just Shuri, Nimrod, and then Venom destroy stuff everywhere. Yep. That's it. And I lost. And that's just a... Do, can you get Shuri on the second to last turn of the or I'm not I'm sorry, turn four, right? Into yep. Nimrod and then just have destroy cards in your hand. Whereas our combo is can you right. get Patriot on three, Mystique on four, Blue Marvel on five, and then you have to have Ultron. Like it's so yeah. convoluted in a way. I think it's okay. I think it's gonna you'll win games with it, but I don't I don't know. It I, I thought it'd feel better then it does it's just yeah just over 20 power you know on average like because again that's the yep. high roll is 28 right if yeah. you just go like you know patriot mystique then it's uh 24 if you just go patriot it's uh what uh two four six eight two uh 16 each lane yeah um that's not winning you anything it's really not uh yeah. and then like you feel like like you want to play cards like uh, Dazzler and stuff, which you do. Right. But the Dazzler is worth less than if you have like the Patriot Mystique thing for the drones. Right. The drone actually taking all the buffs is going to be better than some of these other low cost cards you wanted to fit into the curve. So you are really bound by it. And then it's also incredibly hard to fit in control cards. Right. So you don't really interact with your opponent. But if they interact with you to throw off any of these combos, you're in trouble. So, yeah. So, I do wonder if there's a different route you go. Because on its face yep. value, Ultron is better than Doctor Doom if we have an empty lane. Okay? True. So, true. what if you just did something like, um, like, what if you played Claw in the deck, right? And turn five Claw, okay. tr like yeah. that Ultron. That way you yeah. really buff a lane. Um, and, like, you just play, like, Kazar on four. Right, yeah, you like could. Kazar into Claw into Ultron might be something like in a, yep. maybe Ant Man's in there or something. Yeah, you I could play the other one costs or like yeah, Dazzler 
Ant Man, the cards that want like that lane getting filled up to be really good for them, but then you don't have the specific Patriot Mystique combo potentially mm-hmm. holding you back, and that can open up that mid game for you to do different things. Uh, maybe some location manipulation as well. I don't know, like a storm locking something down that you'll get back with the drones. There's space to play. Storm's sure. interesting. I like storm. Yeah, as an idea. Um. It's just, or maybe they need to go back to the drawing board with Ultron and make him like a six three, but then have the call out that the drones are his power, whatever it is. I'm intrigued, but I'm scared of. That. If releasing right, doing that change with Gwenpool around the corner is impossible, but it was an idea. Did you see that Gwenpool got a little OTA adjustment? Yeah, she got like better. So <laughs> Her she, base power so is she up. went from yeah a four four yeah that gives four random plus two hits on your cards That's... in your hand. Uh, to a four six with three it's random plus three two randoms. Hits. Yeah, what the that's heck? Like, second dinner. That's, that's still that's more good. more upfront power that, in my opinion, makes her better because coming in in the later portion of the game, you want that guaranteed burst of power and then the little bit in hand. Like I prefer that. Yeah. So no. wow. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I I think the biggest takeaway I have from this. OTA is uh, I'm happy that they're willing to try things. They they even go on to say, hey, we don't know if we need to revisit Ultron later to actually take some it, power away from him. No. Um but so but we'll figure it out. Uh we just don't, six, didn't nine, want to do baby. it preemptively. Yeah. Uh I don't know if they will. Doesn't feel like they'll need to. Uh no. it's also funny that they give Ultron this crazy new buff and then Leech it got better <laughs> in the same yep. update. And they're like, <laughs> stop him. Um but, but Leech does that for so many things. Like, true. Yeah. It's a good OTA. It's just a little like claw is like really cool to see. But I'm also just like, why not Captain America? Uh huh. Also, Touch, yeah, hit a couple of these early game ongoing cards. Captain America, Punisher, Claw. Like, does feel like it could be a package with the old onslaught. Right. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's just. I want the cards to be cool. I want the cards to be better. Now I am excited to play Onslaught with Claw in general. Yeah, that's a, that's a five twenty at that point. With um, um, are you going Ms. Marvel or are you going to wait for Namora and then pop off? Hmm. Claw's well, like an amazing Namora target, right? He hits if five you nine first, or he have ramp, cannot yeah. be shanged, and then is still generating this plus eight so his rate of like 512 is nuts you're just the only thing is you have this quote-unquote play restriction of you can only play him in the mid the left lane to get the value of the ability uh yeah i mean Dude, what if you could find a way to go like claw into iron man into nomura honestly iron man into nomura might be one of like the best things sneakily i mean he's a five five yeah, they, um, we're talking wave at this point, though, right? You got to go wave some kind of energy cheat to accelerate. Could be silo. Oh, you can't. Yeah, we got Psylocke the silo now. Why not? So you got Pro X, Pro X Claw, Iron Man, the Mora. Like that's a dirty, dirty deck. Too many five costs, but it's Ooh, if you, would be fun. Interesting idea is well, I mean that's why you play silo and wave, right? So yes. you know, go on three, wave on four, kind of thing if you need to, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, wave on three, sorry. Um, but uh, what if it was Professor X on four, right? blind snipe a lane, oh, yeah, Namora, give the buff, yep. and then you can just claw to right. extend more into that lane. Why not? I don't know how that's going to win you very many games, but it might. Well, I mean, if you're going to Onslaught, right, the claw Ms. Marvel, Ms. Marvel Onslaught in her early stages was viable. In our current stage, you got to get a little bit more clever in making mm-hmm. sure that you're getting her buffs, but not that much more clever. Like, do you remember this, Brad? You'd go Invisible Woman, Ms. Marvel, Onslaught. Like, I saw that a lot. Right. It's definitely something you could still do. Yeah. Um, but I think I would rather go with Claw in particular. I'd rather go like Ant Man or like Mojo or something uh, as like your small thing. And then okay. like Omega Red. Oh, the Omega Red. Well, no, think <laughs> about it because I want to go tall on that lane while also simultaneously extending Claw out more. True. So how True. do I go tall? Well, I can double the effect of Ant-Man, double the effect of Mojo. Um, yep. Slap Omega Red there. 
and I feel pretty good about winning my two lanes now. Um, Mojo's a bit more tricky because it depends on your opponent as well. So Ant Man's the consistent one here, but yeah. Ant Man being a one nine is uh, pretty cool. Or a, let's go. Yeah, one nine. Yeah. Yeah, they buffed him. Yeah. So we got a one nine. You have a a four five. So that's thirteen. You have another four. That's seventeen. Then another seven. That's twenty four in a lane right there. And then sixteen right. to the right. And then potentially nineteen to the right with that omega red buff. No, I'm sorry, twenty two to the right because yep. it's a double buff. So and you're putting eight 20, on the other side. Twenty four and twenty two. Yep. That can win you games. I know I was just talking garbage about Ultron's 28 in each lane not winning as much, but this feels oddly more consistent. Interesting. I mean, yeah, you have fewer, you need, you have different paths to get the same power Mm -hmm. rather than Ultron having to have like just the critical path of I play this every single time on this turn. Right. The only way for it to work. I think honestly with Claw, like just this spectrum ongoing might be the might be the move. Spectrum Destroyer coming back. No. Eh, no. Damn. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. I I I hate that I got Destroyer unlocked a hair too late. Yeah. Like for his heyday. Like I got yep. Destroyer unlocked and I, I was able to play it as like the top deck for like maybe a week or two. And right. then I like, think just too many cards came out at once and it just negated. I don't know if it was like the, the big November. Um, oh, yeah. All those series four and fives that blew it up. Yeah. Where Destroyer was just gone from the meta. And, and I was like, gone. yeah, I was still in series three. Just got Destroyer around that time. Yeah. Uh, because I, I started with the, the global launch. I, I wasn't like you, Teddy. Or no, wait. You didn't, you didn't play beta. I was. I got in the beta, but I was free to play. That's right. I was free to play for the beta, and then I started turning into the dolphin that I am now. The beautiful. Dolphin. I was a, I was a temporary whale. I am no longer a whale. Yeah. I I basically reached that plateau point of uh, yeah. like I have thirty thousand tokens. I have fifteen caches, and I'm collection complete. I'm good right. for the foreseeable future to kind of keep it going. If a really good value comes up and I was planning on getting gold anyway, then I might drop a little bit here and there, like maybe once a month. Um, but yeah. beyond that, I'm not really spending on the game anymore yeah. uh, for m- multiple reasons. But speaking of new cards, Teddy, some other new cards. Starting with the season pass card in the link. We, oh, she's good. We, we also, we saw a little while ago, about a week ago, she got nerfed to a 5-6 in a random OTA. Yep. Right. And then right before the video, or right right when the video came out, we saw her at 5-7 again. We're kind of like, did you mess up? And then yeah. that little OTA that came out that messed with uh, Gwenpool also messed yep. with her to be a 5-7 again. And you're like, why did you, why'd you nerf her? <laughs> they <laughs> wanted to give it a try? She's, she's good. She's really Either good. Way, Either way, really good. So yeah, if we see a little touchdown on Blink, I, I would still keep playing her. She seems super fun. I love the deck building idea here. And then just the tempo, man. Tempo baby off any of these high power forecasts to play her on curve. Or I mean, popping her into a lot of different things is feeling great. But the main thing is ramp. I've seen true ramp and I've seen hella ramp. Both do right. incredibly well. I experimented with a number of different builds, mostly around Blink, because that one really inspired me for my deck building more so than Nocturne. I did try Surfer, which was very interesting, because Blink is a way that you could kind of guarantee getting Sarah to the board. Um, Or you can cycle if you put enough fodder cards like your ones in there. Just make sure, like on turn four or five, you play a three and a one, and then Blink makes that one into another three. Mm-hmm. just to make sure that you're cycling your deck with these guys, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that makes me interested to do then Sarah Control. Yeah. I, like, even if you just, like, on four, because sometimes you can tempo out your Shang-Chi to, like, to get rid of, like, a a monster that spawned yeah. on an island, or, like, maybe there's, right. like, a, 
uh maybe you're expecting to see a sentry come down or like uh, or even if you just like you throw it out hoping to hit something if you whiff you're like cool i have a guaranteed shuffle that back in get my sarah recall. out yeah and maybe re-roll it in my my control turn you know yep uh i've also been trying another good com uh, card with blink which we talked about a little bit uh leech yes the new leech is like perfect for the control lists right because you get that I, effect yeah. nullify their hand and then trade that two power body for something punchier on the blink turn yeah i haven't Ooh. tried blink yet in sarah control but i've been i've been trying leech and yeah. leech on four in a turn in which i didn't i, I don't want to give them prior or i want to give them priority anyway Right. So two on four, four power on five, that's six across two turns. And I negate a bunch of stuff in their hand. It lets me do the control things I want to do. Uh, it just yep. fits nicely. And it's great because um, a lot of the four costs that you run in Sarah Control are things like Shang-Chi, Enchantress, yeah. very reactionary, very like, there's not really a four drop besides like Miss Marvel, if you're going that route, that's right. like proactive that I can just set this up to make my final turns better. Leech actually feels like it fits that role pretty nicely. And I was happy, oh, to, yeah. happy to use it. 100%. No, I, I like the new stat line for Leech. I don't know if I like his effect <laughs> being in the game more generally, but uh, we'll see where I fall on that. And for the control players, it definitely is great to see him being cheaper. And I then... played, uh, played Leech in Hyeva today too. That went well. Nice. Yeah, the location protection magic limbo has never lasted so long. But yeah, I think that blink is awesome right now. Just like turn your brain off, play ramp. But then if you want to dig deeper into some of these deck building ideas with other archetypes, you can find some really awesome kind of consistency multiplication with blink finding key cards for you. And once people really unlock that, I think you're going to love having blink in your collection. Living Tribunal is what I did the first thing on uh, Tuesday and it was nice having my only other five cost be Iron Man. It allowed me to get Iron Man out guaranteed to be able to go on slot uh, tribunal. Really? Yep. Okay. Yes. Because so you haven't drawn Iron Man, but then you trade the Jubilee or whatever four you were using or into Electro Iron Man. on three. Yeah. Trade the Electro for a big boy and then you get to power that lane up. I got you. I just you just have to not run the Modoc hella thing. Yeah, because no, it's just like straight tribunal. Yeah, pulling Modoc is really sad <laughs> when you really didn't want Modoc. <laughs> I, I tried that for like two hand. games, and yeah. I reached the point in the end of one of the games where I was going to blink, and I had two cards left in my deck. Yeah. One was an Iron Man, one was a Modoc, and I was like, right. "Do we go for the 50-50? Because if we hit the Iron Man, we have like four hundred power in each lane. Chat says yes. Uh, we did, and we we hit it. We got we got there, and yeah. uh, we won the eight Cooper. And I was like, all right, cutting the Modoc now. Yep. <laughs> like if that was my lesson. So yep. uh, it, it was great. Um, I, I think that's another cool thing. Blink feels like one of those cards that just can go in a lot of different decks. We even talked about it like when Darkhawk and stuff, right? Um, yeah. It's interesting. I, I'm a big fan of it. I Dude, don't cycle the rock slide into a hawk and then draw rock slide again. Let's go. Or like you said earlier, we can leech on four like in the yep. classic dark hawk when you leeched on five yeah. after playing dark hawk on four just a little switcheroo there exactly. uh, and then blink out the dark hawk as your only other like, five cost blink, maybe blink is giving me the the feeling obviously it's very different effect but the feeling of grandmaster like the feeling i wanted to have from grandmaster right. but blink yeah. like does it like a huge deck building Are potential saying, for multiplicative effects are you saying that grandmaster should swap a card with uh, another yeah a cheaper on reveal when you're specifically an on reveal oh specifically an on so another cheaper on reveal card yeah that gets pretty niche just like a cheaper card would be fun to play around with maybe you make him a three or a four cost and then you can play your i mean again white, white like white tiger is the one of the best hits you can either go blink off the white tiger for a big boy or grandmaster off the white tiger for just another thing but you already got the value of the tiger so right Let's go. I'm in. Or All Jubilee. Right. Jubilee, again, one of the best hits for both of Jubilee those. Jubilee is be, still very good. Would be pretty spicy. Second dinner, you know where we are. You can contact us. We'll be happy to do some design for you guys. Yep. All right. 
alongside Blink this week, we had the Spotlights, which consisted of Kyra, Celine, and the new card in Nocturne. Have Nocturne. you been able to play a little bit with Nocturne so far, Teddy? Or have you? Oh yeah. Not so I, I kind of slammed Nocturne into most of my early deck testing, even though they were built more around Blink. But hey, that Surfer deck was running the Nocturne. I also did have a um, a pseudo Silky Move deck that was leveraging both Blink and Nocturne. Um, I haven't played like the true Silky Move without Blink and just Nocturne slotted in there. I think that's probably her best list, and I think is just a little off meta at the moment. Nocturne seems fine. I don't know. Like, I don't want her buffed or nerfed, but I also don't care about playing her. Right. Is that fair? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's what I essentially alluded to last week of like, I, I think she's, when I was doing the, my, my listings of like one through five for this, for this month. Yeah. Which I guess uh, we should talk about that real quick because I could pull up my list if, uh, Hey, if you, uh, if you have, do you have a list by any chance? I did not make mine uh, this season. All right. Well, let's see how much you agree with my list. Okay. Yep. So I'll start from five to one. Five being the worst. Yep. And I have a little snippet of each thing. I have Sage at number five. Interesting, because so, she was recently changed, or she was changed kind of late here yep. to the season well, releasing. This was post-change, too. That is made this post-change? You think Sage is the worst? Yep. Sage, I said I'd okay. love to be wrong. think she's okay, but there are other cards I could easily run over her, and most decks I would consider her in. Yeah, like the big detractor to Sage is that she has to be a, re- a pseudo reactionary three drop. Like she's not the mm-hmm. three drop I want to play on tempo. And any card I want to be able to play on tempo or later on to like good effect either way. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that. I would probably put Sage above Nocturne though. So I have Nocturne right above Sage at four. Okay. okay so we just flipped those. Yeah. So my reasoning is I said she's actually sneaky good in my opinion. I just think the mm-hmm. ceiling yeah. is better on everything else this month however she by far has the highest floor of just being a three five a three five that can change a location and move like the her ability the floor is just the highest of anything this month more so than blink because blink can whiff and be weird um like you yeah, can blink just when hit... you've just drawn all of your big stuff and you're like i want to blink because i'm holding just big stuff i finally get to play but it's gonna have no targets that sucks right or it's gonna be like not really what you want at that point because like i've even had times where like i hit dr doom early and i'm kind of like i kind of had a different game plan in mind for how i want to set this board up that's that central park really messed me up now huh um, central park like, and doom bots yeah you're like i just something got like that to play. has happened so you know whatever uh number three i have squatch sasquatch it's just gonna be insane and bounce a lot of different cool yep. deck building ideas any card but that gets cheaper, Mobius. yeah, Mobius is the thing. But any card that gets cheaper uh, by you doing something rather than like, I don't know, or I guess uh, like you can't tra- uh, treat him like Scar because Scar is like very win more in my mind yeah. where this actually just builds upon itself. Right. You can guess number two. Namora. Yep. Uh, I think people are sleeping on her. She's going to be crazy with things like Wong or even Ravona Goblins. To ever, nobody understands Nomura. It's killing me, Brad. I saw in the post of the OTA when they gave her a point, people in the comments were like, they should have given her an ongoing so that she synergizes better with stuff like Namor and Orca. I'm like, no, I'm not playing her with Namor or Orca. Are you insane? She's good with like all this other stuff instead, and she's better as an on-reveal. I've been fighting <clears throat> literally ever since she was data mined. I've been like at war for Nomura. <laughs> And of course, number one is Blink. I just said turn Shit four insane. after Electro is really gross. Yeah. Um, turn uh, turn five, five after, after Jubilee, Jubilee is really good. Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm kind of at for this month. I still think Nocturne is a I, solid card, but it's so but easy to just about, like get something else. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like every there's other things that do her job, um, other things that move, other things that change locations. And sometimes um, you want something that moves immediately. Right. Yeah. Like uh, I, I play Miles in my um, my Hellfire list with uh, the uh, Infinite War Machine thing, 
because right. I have a little bit of a move package in there, Spider Man, Silk, and Jeff. And the reason is like on turn seven, because I'm playing Magic, I want to guarantee to be able to play a one drop alongside of my um, my Infinite. So my three one drops are effectively Stature, Ebony Maw, and Miles as a backup plan. So sometimes on turn four, um, or like if I'm playing Miles in general, like just throughout the match, I want to play Spider Man or something like that, just so it moves immediately. Nocturne doesn't yeah. really do that, and sometimes Nocturne's awkward because like you play her and you're like, "Ooh, I would have liked her a turn earlier to turn off this location for this timing yep. window." Yep. Speaking of timing window, sorry, hers is weird. Have you noticed that? No. The move occurs, right? Yeah. But everything else in the turn happens, and then she changes the location. It's always last. In it's the always queue? it's always last, oh. which is the opposite so if of I, all other move synergies. So you're saying if I move her and then play a card to the location I move her to, that that card will be affected by the current location, yes. not the random yes. one. Quantum Realm is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't quite picked up on that. I'm surprised I didn't. But uh, yeah, weird. And you hopefully, change like they'll change it because that shouldn't be how it works. I agree. I it was a little weird when I was it's playing. It's literally on the card when this moves, not at the end of the turn this moved. Right. Yeah. So it can mess up your timing and stuff. Um, so I don't know if I've done a thing where I can sequence it correctly. I'm pretty sure it's almost always been at the very end. I don't think I can go like play a card, move her, then play another card. Um, I, it's it's a pretty much always been like the end of the turn it happens. Right. Okay. The other effects happen. Interesting. First. Well, we'll look Regardless. into it more. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the week, though? Do you think people should, uh, before we go into the next week? No. <laughs> That's the other thing is like these other cards, like Kyera was hot when she came out. Now she's not. And Celine was always the junk one trick that even the junk decks have moved away from. Um, yeah. So this is a pass week. This is, I'm seeing a lot of people calling it out. It's a pass season. I think that some of them rise above, but um, this week, definitely, if you're budget conscious, rest easy. You're not missing out. Well, let's look at the next week real quick. Oh, why'd they have to put some of the best variants with Sage, Brad? <laughs> yep. I, I used uh, tokens on Nocturne this week. I will be using yeah. my caches next week because I want these variants. Legion Tribunal, baby. <laughs> Ink, Pulp, and a Flaviano Legion that is just it's, absolutely amazing. It's the Legion I want more than anything because the only yep. Legion I have is the Dan Hip one, which is fine. I sure. don't mind it. But no. this is just like, oh, this is my vibe. This this is this is what I like. Yep. And then the Ink Pulp is fantastic. I would like to collect all the Ink Pulps, please. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then Sage, like, we'll see where she really falls it seems like she could be a decent efficiency piece, especially for a deck like, you know, anything. Surfer, hey, man. We always call it out every time a three-cost releases. I think the Surfer deck could be using Sage, like, say, instead of Gladiator, definitely instead of uh, Wolfsbane. Right. Feels a little bit stronger there. And I'm sure there's going to be some creative uses where she can get really powerful, like really, really powerful. I don't know. I just got leveled recently... <laughs> By a um, Valk Grandmaster final turn combo on a Cerebro deck that was running Magic. So you can make some really niche cards pop off in the right combos. Yeah. I I think she's going to be interesting. She's going to be a lot better with like Wong and stuff, just like kind of Wolfsbane is. Well, yeah. So how do you feel about <sighs> this ability on Absman? Go from 3 0 to 4 4. That's a pretty big buff. Yes. I just... That might be the saving grace, but like, let's compare it to another wonderful three drop into Absman combo, Brood into Absman. Uh-huh, yeah. What's better? Well, so Brood is six and easily playable on curve. But then Abs Abs is Man, 12. Just an immediate follow-up. It takes away a lot of board space. Your deck has to be able to accommodate that. Uh -huh. But Sage also is kind of taking up a lot of board space because you want other unique tokens, tokens with unique powers around her to really amp up. Um, specifically, three of them. 
so that she could hit that six power of the brood. She does key off the opponents, which is great. I'm wondering if she could just be an efficiency tool, like instead of Gladiator and a deck that's using Mysterio to discount um, Mockingbird. Then you have a zero, which is pretty unique out there on the board and something like that. How often do you think you'll be able to match in power? Yep. Ignoring the board space thing, because I know we got to look at it in a vacuum at least for a second. Yeah. Sage and Avsman, can that ever match... On average, Brood and Avsman. Six versus six and twelve. Can you get six and twelve on average with Sage and Avsman? Six and twelve. Six and twelve. I mean, that would be the Absman follow up would have to hit also hit at least three cards. Yeah, th- well, no, I'd have to hit more. I'd have to hit four cards to hit twelve power. It's plus two each, right? We sit yeah. no, just he four, starts six. at 4-4. Four, four. He needs oh, to four, hit. Oh, 4-4. Four, you're right. I was thinking yeah, he was at yeah. 6 for some reason. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the Sage could easily do it. The Abs Man is going to be the big ask. That's going to be the mm-hmm. lift. Um, but, I mean, yeah. if he if he hits a little bit less, like a 4-8. at the, So now now that we've seen that maybe like the average is like, you know, 3-6 and 4-8. Right. Now you can compare board space and deck construction to that counterpart is the loss of four power on the abs man on average. Cause the sage we think can most likely match the brood. Yeah. Now is the abs man not matching his previous counterpart at the cost of two open deck slots or I'm sorry, location slots. Uh, is that a good trade off to be like a well, four eight? Thing. I say like run them, run them both get bast in here, run brood sage abs man um mm-hmm. <laughs> run patriot mysterio and squirrel girl okay it sounds Dazzler. like i can really easily cut this sage all of a sudden i don't know sage starting three three pop up maybe there's something there yeah I but th- yeah the like, bast idea is interesting i don't know about yeah. the shoving her in a patriot list just because yeah, you is have it a just shared like direction. she plays in bounce with bast yeah she might i mean turn and one then bast that goes with really sasquatch good. later like that could be something but you don't yeah. want to play bast with sasquatch no it makes you sad yeah i mean but you it's can, like you know but like it's you're gonna have some games where like would love to bast. Well, I guess maybe you, do you run Luke Cage just in, as a backup I mean, in case you maybe, hit that but it's, we're we're really in the we're really reaching to make this card good. Like we each rated this one pretty low this season for yeah. a reason. Um, it's just real hard because then it's like she's competing with Hit Monkey, and obviously Hit Monkey for the bounce deck is gonna be a little better. Right, but this one you can play on its own on curve. Yeah, get more efficiently on average, especially like both. in yeah, you can play into the bast lane, right? You go bast on right. one, two, you play maybe you just like you know, throw down whatever on two. Yep. Um, Angela. and uh, like, okay, like what if you go like uh, two one drops on two, right? yeah, or that in uh, and then like maybe you hit the Nico turn into a demon, so now you have a one, a two, and a six, and then Sage is a three, six off rip. Then you can Falcon pick all those up again. And now Sage is in a lane by herself. Well, you're hoping that the opponent played at least one card there. So Sage is going to be a a three, eight, right? Which is gladiator Um, without the downside of drawing one of their cards. And you can also beast to pick up Sage, which would make her a bit better on average. Now as you see, might be like a two, six that can grow from there after being beasted. That's true because in the the bounce game plan that was using like old cheap hit monkey, you'd look to play the monkey and then discount it and like roll it again. The sage on that first hit is going to be better than the hit monkey, and on the second hit is probably going to be worse. But overall, it might be more dynamic. Well, I think we might have found a home for. Her. I'm still right. not convinced she's going to be crazy good. No, but she might. Oh, look, I'll, I'll just say I'll also, finish by saying like, this: I I yeah. want to be proven wrong. I want to be proven no, wrong that she's going to yeah. be good. Yeah. That's it. Same. I'll try and bounce. All right. So now talk about new cards. Talk about upcoming cards. There is the other thing to talk about, which I didn't Leaves make a tab. And milestones. Right. So let's find a thing while you 
introduce us. Which one do you us. want to do first? Do we want to go milestones? Uh, milestones is a bit pretty quick. happier, right? I guess. So maybe we Basically, want to do Basically, everybody's going to get 100 free credits, and then the whales get fed a little bit more. Oh, they're, they're, if... they're, yeah, they're the vibranium rewards, but now in the client. Yes. So no, we they're have... They're not even vibranium rewards. They're, we've they're had called these. milestones now. Well, we, uh, it's like the... Um, the Kim Jacinto Enchantress and the uh, the what's it called nullified uh, miles. Yes, those. Yes. So this is if you make purchases specifically through the Marvel Snap web shop, you earn points on a tracker. You're gonna have to make sure that you link your Snap account there on the web shop. Um, it's a good idea to purchase through the web shop anyway because they have some more beneficial tax regulations than sometimes purchasing through the app or an app store. Um, though I guess app stores often have other promos as well. Uh, but you will get that free 100 credits for everyone. And then if you make any purchase, you'll get a premium mystery variant. And then as you rack up points in their little metagame of progression, you get additional rewards scaling up to an exclusive variant, which is the true whale flex. Which is like, this I think Green Goblin. There's a more Red Goblin art for Green Goblin than there is for Green Goblin. Right. Which well, makes me a little mad. Technically, one of those Red Garden, uh, Red Gardens, Red Goblins is a carnagerized goblin, which is not technically Red Goblin. <laughs> Fair, but the the aesthetic I, of Green Goblin it. is more often red in his cards than Correct. green. Correct. And I hate it. <laughs> I do too, um, but also, I get it as an artist. Not, like not you want to draw the cool Ghost version. Spider either, so Ghost Spider has so many good variants that this one is like, eh. Yeah, this is so this is like two hundred dollars, right? This is how it's always been. They've always been two hundred bucks. Very expensive. The true whale flex, uh, right? Again, yeah. I mean, you know, you get the credits, which I guess the uh, base uh, level yeah. of the extra credits for everybody is nice. Um, and for the people who are always buying the Battle Pass, getting an additional premium mystery variant to help fill out your albums also, I, well, I like it. Hey, who messed up by buying the the uh, the, the season pass on the app and not through yep. this? Me. Who's that, Brad? Oh. So I don't get this. <laughs> yep. Until it feels I buy silly that thing. it has to be abstracted to the web store rather than have this right. live in the shop. And the uh, only reason I ever used the web store before was because it used to have a weird like exchange rate because it's from Newverse, and yeah. like things were just slightly cheaper by a dollar or two on the web yes. shop. But I now that it is, is this fix that. the the web shop avoided giving the cuts that say Google or Apple demand right. of in app purchases, so they were giving a benefit just because they're bottom line was then better so they just gave a cheaper price but now they're just um, like no you pay the same price <laughs> now you now that's now, standardized now but you it. get but you get this yeah sure yeah it's i fine. wish that they might i hope they migrate it to the app but at the same time i hope they develop other features ahead of that change so well i am ashamed so, to uh to admit that i have two of these whale variants already i have the kim jacinto uh, enchantress and i have the car the uh, nullified uh, look at that Whoa. look at that the whale that's me but are uh, you going for um no okay <laughs> absolutely Didn't think not. so not this Didn't one so. it's so yeah. bad looking i it's i like funky the carnage like goblin is way better even the other red goblin one where he's got his knives and all the dead bodies around him like, that one's sick like let's look at green goblin real quick look at his very and then we'll go to leagues Yep, so which I got that tab ready to go. Baby. Neither Brad nor myself is in a league. We're not so in the European one. regions to be able to be in the playtest for this. That We're going to be bringing that to the rest of the worldwide audience soon. <sighs> and that's a great Ink Pulp Goblin, please. That ink Pulp is going to be so good. It comes out of May 30th. That? Okay. And it's only 700 gold. Insane. Ooh. That oh. might change. All the Ink Pulps are more expensive. Give it to me. Because, like, I've been rocking this one, the, the Carnage one. I like it. Yes. Same. Um, that was in a Conquest, I believe. Yeah, it was the Conquest Shop one. It was the first one. Yep. Um, yeah. This Green Goblin, though, is fantastic. The Pandar. Yep. Because I, I love like the Pandar stuff. The Pumpkin Bomb. People pan the Pandar by saying it's AI art, but I like it. Yeah. 
but this is by far the, the the vibes are crazy. My only complaint with the sink pulp one is I wish no, no, a little bit up. of this, a little bit. Of, well, maybe we'll see because like there's so, there's some smoke right here on the left. Maybe when it's expanded, this will be like a pumpkin bomb. I just want more pumpkin bombs. Right. There's and, that other one where he's diving like straight down. That's amazing. Uh, hmm. Why is it not here? You know the one I'm talking about. Hmm. Weird. Well, snapped out fan has omitted been a one dream. of the best variants. Uh, and even the pixel I like. Sure. So one of the better pixels. Oh, I love. I miss going out Islands Adventure where he's like trick or treat, smell my feet, trying to blow you off the street. And he throws the yep pumpkin bomb at Pow. you. Oh, and you can feel the, the flames of the pyrotechnics. Oh, so good. All right, leagues. We're not in leagues, leagues like you said. Have launched. Amazing. Yeah, Ben Bro. Uh, hold truly on, truly incredible. A national treasure. This feels. Is this a dig article? Hold on. Because I just see this picture of Ben Brode, very unflattering in one of his, uh, like, uh, the videos. And it just says, He just seems trustworthy. He seems trustworthy. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yep. Oh, Skeptical uh, Evil Brode's event. Okay, sure. Uh, so what are leagues? You get rewards for ranks in leagues. Groups of 30 players in a competition to see who the best are around. Many players were under the impression that leagues will be a new game mode similar to Conquest. Actuality, it doesn't have a new match mode. It just uses match and ranked and conquest to give or take points based on performances. You win cubes, you get points. You lose cubes, and they get taken away. I believe per win, Most it's like the time. fifth. Yeah, we'll to get to that in a second. Yeah, it, it's fifty cubes per win, and you lose twenty five per loss. And Is then that... there's also a rate. There's like a flat rate per win and lose, and then there's a cube. Right. Rate. And these are the rewards for uh, ranks from one through thirty. Uh, essentially, number one, you get a thousand credits, a bunch of boosters, a premium mystery variant, and a spotlight key. Um, then you get a uh, thousand credits, 310 boosters, variant. I'm not going to go through all these. You can look at it on Snap.Fan if you want to see in you know verbatim. Or you can quickly, while you're listening to this, if you're not watching us on YouTube, if you're on Spotify, real quick, open up your phone and just look because the video is still there. You just have your phone locked. Here you go. Pause it. Enjoy. Let's move on. Um, where do they have it? Here they are. The this is the the problematic portion, I think, for a lot of people because you can just spend money to do better in your league. Either prevent yourself from losing points on lost games, just like lock your rank um, by doing a hundred and fifty gold purchase or two hundred gold purchase to be able to double your winnings. Um, so chasing number one is not just a true test of skill and time commitment. It is also a test of wallet. Right. Which it, depending on the league that you get in, right. And also how the matchups go, I could see you getting. So here's the thing. I'm curious, like if the top players are always going to get matched with kind of the same group and then you end up doing kind of a gentleman's agreement of like never use perks that's obviously not always possible i used to play a game called star wars galaxy of heroes where you would get matched in the matchmaking against the same shard of players all the time and you would basically have to enter a shard discord and there was like a mafia that would have they had a certain way that you played to be able to maximize people being able to climb at certain times to get max rewards because then other people would climb at other times during the day to keep on getting their top payouts for being higher in the league um, I don't know if something like that is going to be able to evolve in Snap, or if the you know the whales will always be able to take number one. Yeah, I don't like this. Um, because why is it cheaper than my cosmetics? Gosh, dang it! <laughs> they yeah, have a reasonable that... price for this, but not for a border. Well, I wouldn't say reasonable. These are thirty-minute, you know, little things. So they only last thirty minutes, and I assume that's yeah. thirty minutes of real time, not thirty minutes of yes. in-game time. Right, I assume uh, that too. So I do not like this. Leagues were supposed to be like a cool thing to like, you know, join a league with your friends or whatever. And like, uh, uh, why? Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Can you join them with other people, or is it randomized of who you join with? It's they said it. You don't get the invite. I think clans. Hopefully, yeah, clans will have will a feature be... for like uh, a clan league leaderboard. Um, but right now, this is just the the randos that are close. They they've said that the matchmaking 
They haven't given us the details, They're similar to how they don't say exactly how MMR is calculated. Um, but they say that time spent in game was a specific factor. And then also, I'm assuming MMR. Um, all I'll say is, is that they alluded to announcing two new game modes this year. Yep. We're already reaching the halfway point of the year. We're approaching this is one of them. This better not be one of them. Is what I'm saying. This is one of them. Do we have confirmation that this is I'm one of them? I'm promising you, Brad, this is one of them. This is not a game mode. No, it's not. You just play the game and they keep track of your points on another leaderboard. Yeah, that's, so I'm going to be a little bit annoyed if this ends up being one of them. 100% this is one of them. I'm now, my, wor- my true worry is that um, the other one will be clans and oh. you'll actually not get a new mode. That's It'll fucking just be a- stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Ugh. we got, we were in the data mine last time and we had hope of like high stakes tables and lucky draw promo, right. which are like keywords those that look be, like they those, could be unique those things. Those should be new, the new game modes, yeah. right? Right. I'm promising you this is one of them, though. It, it's not been confirmed, but this is just I Teddy's, hope you're wrong. Teddy's um, dose of realism. Let's see what people are saying. Uh, oh, pay to no. win trash. Oh, oh look at that. Hey. The F <laughs> Boy, they the need the money for. delightful plates. <laughs> uh, uh, the greedy devs uh, remember they made 88 million dollars last year uh, seems like some extra resources if you don't purchase, purchase any perks this is um, yeah this, so the base thing right guys if you play and you finish in the average point of your league you will get some additional free resources that you are not getting now um, if you place within 15 you will get 100 credits and 105 boosters so <laughs> it's not a lot I get that <laughs> The 26 to 30 is like, why you tried, I guess. 15 boosters? <laughs> they didn't get a single credit. Why 15? Why is Number that even... one gets 1,000 credits, 300 boosters, a premium mystery variant, and a spotlight key that's valued at like $25. More than that. Yeah, spotlight. No, isn't it 50 for two? Isn't a spotlight key the equivalent of six thousand tokens, which is around fifty bucks? Spotlight key is fifty bucks. Around that, yeah. Some some could argue it's a hundred based on how six thousand tokens used to be valued at a hundred before. So it's not a hundred dollars. It's around fifty though. Between twenty five and fifty, I'll take that. Yeah. So okay, we get all this, and then if winning you finish... <laughs> is enough of a prize. And it hurts to say this, but it's incentivizing buying the boosters to take number one. Yeah. To get that spotlight key. Because number two does not get a spotlight key, my friends. Number two does not get a spotlight key. Only number one. I wish the top five got them. Can't do that. That'd be too generous, clearly. Hey, Teddy, don't worry about it. The The real prizes and the real spotlight keys were the friends we made along the way. And the leagues on the way. Yeah. Uh, I will not be doing these. I There's just no hope, reason. I hope that you get a call out when you match with someone in your league. They're like, hey, league match. You know? Be cool. Because New animation. I'm not about to memorize everyone's name, but I think it would be neat on just on the ladder that I'm like, oh, this guy, he's in, you know, he's in my yep. league. He's currently so number three. Is, I'm currently number four. Ooh, I can That's a super frog. high stakes because then if I win, I'm taking points up and he's taking points down. So Unless he has the boosters. True. If he's <laughs> then <laughs> then winning doesn't the matter except for you. Shatter. And if yeah. you have a booster on, the game doesn't matter really. It truly does not matter. Amazing. Well, I suppose that I would still get the points for winning. He just wouldn't lose points. Yeah, but if he's 50 ahead of you, you might just tie him. But yep. you don't you don't like swing it. It's not like sports no. where like head to head matchups in your division uh, that yeah. swings a game in, uh, to your favor yep. to help you catch up more. Oh, watch, watch! The worst of all worlds will happen is that it will call out league match, and then it will allow you to make a purchase right before you hop in. <laughs> <laughs> league like, match. Do you want to protect yourself? I, I I I've seen enough backlash from this from creators, from the average people, all over Twitter, yeah. Discord, all that stuff. I'm hoping Second Dinner sees that backlash and says, you know what? Let's change it. Will they do that? I highly doubt it. But right. this is Because here's the thing. There's bad. a world... 
there's a world like there's a world where these existing is fine if there is a finite number that you can get a season and it's like not paid progression if like they these existed in the conquest shop as like individual one-off purchases and i just have to strategize on like when i'm gonna use my four total that i got that'd be fun um because then it feels like there's a little bit of extra gaminess to the league system but there was no monetary spending involved in me do- performing better just my strategy or if these cost credits instead of gold yeah i mean that would be better because then that had a limited number of purchases income. yeah that's a it. limited number of purchases say purchasable only twice a season and purchasable by credits or by gold honestly if there's a limit and i can spend either one and hey it's just another way to spend gold because they're limiting how many different ways you have to spend gold anyway um okay you i'm in the conversation with you now i'm at the negotiating table with ben brode he's looking back at me and um he's given us none of our demands face of <laughs> it's just the face looking back at me <laughs> i hear you want free event perks <laughs> can't do that best i can do is charge you gold for it yeah best i can do okay, is well, charge you a little less the 150 gold. for 30 minutes is really high can can you just like i don't know make that like 100 for an hour nice even number and he's like you know what let's do this let's do 200 200 <laughs> let's raise it up a little bit let's do yeah. 15 minute increments how about that how's there that how's that sound all right i guess i'll do that ben thanks thank you so much yep thank you sir thank you sir thank you for for my bonuses uh, my perks right. we my did perks. it we did the we did the episode we love you we appreciate you if you want to see these early you can go on patreon.com slash can't stop snapping remember to like subscribe all that good stuff at the bottom leave a comment tell us what card you're looking forward to and again let's talk about the uh the bonus episodes and stuff we're looking at discard uh, we'd already the bounce. So it's discard Haivo and what was the other, the third one? Oh yeah. Ramp. And then Teddy, you suggested one. What was that one again? Affliction ongoing. Affliction ongoing. So those are our four. If you have a fifth one or any other suggestions for what decks you want to see us pilot in the bonus episodes that come right here to YouTube. Once we get them up on Patreon about a week later, let us know. We'll do a poll in the next couple of days, both on Twitter. So again, follow us on Twitter. I can't stop snap. And patreon again love you guys appreciate you hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one keep on snapping bye-bye everybody can't stop snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by brad and teddy ninja originally created by michael thurman